Hey everybody, Jeff Butts from the Mac Observer here. And in this video, we're going to look at Dynamic Island as well as the Live Activities API introduced in iOS 16.1. Now with Dynamic Island, you get notification as well as controls of various apps that are running. This can include your music app, whether it's Apple Music, Spotify, or even YouTube, uh, as well as apps like Maps and anything else that takes advantage of the Dynamic Island. Now, when you're playing music and you go back into your home screen, if you long press on the Dynamic Island, it opens up a mini player, if you will, with controls to adjust your music playback. You can skip a track, go back a track, scrub along the timeline, and pause or play your, your music. If you just tap on Dynamic Island, it will open up whatever music player you had going. Now, when things get interesting is when you add another app that uses Dynamic Island. For example, let's say we need to use our Maps app to get to a particular address. We start a route, we go back to our home screen, and now the main portion of the Dynamic Island is taken over with our route that we have planned. And we can tap on the Dynamic Island to bring the Maps app back up. We can also swipe along the, from the middle of that main Dynamic Island section where our map directions are, towards the right to dismiss our smaller option for our music playback. If we swipe the other direction, it'll come back. And either one, we can long press either the main or the secondary part of our Dynamic Island display to get to that particular app. So that's Dynamic Island. Now let's look at another feature that just released. And this will actually work on more than just the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. Live activities will work on any device you might have that supports iOS 16.1, and it will allow you to see up-to-date information from an app that's implemented live activity support. For example, I've got a sports alert app, and if I go into the app and long press on a game that's starting sometime in the near future, I can then tap on Start Live Activity. Once I do that, if I go to my lock screen or lock my phone, I will see that game waiting for me to watch updates for. And as the game progresses, I will get score updates. I'll get play-by-play -play updates. In terms of hockey, I will see how many shots on goal each team has made as well as what the actual score is, the amount of time left in the period, what period it's in, and so on and so forth. So it offers you a lot of information. And if you tap on the live activities section, it will open up the main app. If you swipe from right to left, you'll get the option to clear that. And then if you want that information back, you'll have to start it up again. Now, another really cool thing that we've just recently seen with Live Activities is an app that actually puts launchers on the Live Activity display. This app is called Lock Launcher. And when you set it up, you choose what app icons you want to see on the Live Activities display. And once that's going, if you tap on one of those, for example, I will tap on my Twitter app, and it opens up Twitter. 
there's no need for me to unlock my phone and then find my Twitter app and tap on it. It's just immediate, jumps right in, and works like a charm. There's a lot of apps that Lock Launcher supports without any tweaking or adjustments, but it also supports shortcuts. So if you have an app that doesn't show up in Lock Launcher, you can create a shortcut for it and add it to your live activity for Lock Launcher, um, even though it's not officially supported. So that's just a high-level overview of Dynamic Island and the live activities feature on iOS 16.1. I sincerely hope that this has helped, and uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up to like the video, and once you've subscribed, tap on that bell icon and you'll get notified of any new videos that we upload. So until next time, everyone have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.